Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. Aaron Hilliard here in the Pacific Northwest and I'm here in this beautiful mixed conifer forest. And today we're gonna go on a walk, 30 minutes. I'm gonna walk through these woods and see what we can find along the way, see if we can help to identify them for you and encourage you to get out in the woods and try this yourself. So why don't you come with me on a walk for 30 minutes, elapsed time, and we're gonna make sure that you're not bored. Let's see what kind of mushrooms we can find. And what's interesting is as I was doing this intro, I look right down here to my left. One of the first things that I see when I'm getting ready to embark on my walk is right here. King Bolete. This is a old, a very old uh, specimen of uh, Boletus edilis. Just growing right here on the side of the trail, right as I'm about ready to start my walk. So here's mushroom number one and uh, it's beautiful. Hopefully we can find some more of these, maybe in better shape. And if you look right here, you can see the pores that differentiate a bolete from a gilled mushroom. This one is undoubtedly full of worms and larvae. So we're gonna toss this one back, let its spores and any mycelium right here that might wanna grow back into the ground, back into the forest. And uh, let's go on our walk. It is the toadstool on Mario Brothers, and this is a toxic species. We're gonna pick this Amanita muscaria just to show you the parts of the mushroom and exactly what it is. So I'm like, if I get it from deep below, now we can see the nature of an Amanita. This one is a pretty good specimen. So it's got this vulva down. It's a cup-like vulva on the bottom and you can see the base of it has this sheath around it and that was the universal veil. So it's like an egg that actually the mushroom pops out of and this would be the shell that's remaining. Then you have a partial veil that's right here. This is where the cap margin separates from the stipe. It leaves behind this veil and that is called the partial veil. If you look on top, all of those white spots are actually remnants of this universal veil down here. So. It's an interesting mushroom. It's really beautiful. You can see the gills under there. And this is known to be a toxic species. I've heard about some people trying to eat it for some sort of spiritual or drug purposes, and they ended up getting really sick. Still, very identifiable, very beautiful mushroom. And this one is a little bit more yellow. They often get dark red, but this is the Amanita muscaria of the Pacific Northwest. Oh, right here on our walk. This is about seven minutes into the walk. What do I have here under this branch? But a, ta-da, beautiful golden chanterelle. You look around the area where you find the chanterelle. You can see a baby button here. Another one right there. There's more back in there. So there are uh, quite a few mushrooms in this little patch. Great. There's golden chanterelle. This is a white chanterelle. Cantharella subalitis, white chanterelle. Personally, I, I usually don't find them in as good a shape as the golden ones. So these usually, unless, I don't know, this is a pretty nice one. So this will probably make it in the basket, but sometimes it can be far more beat up than this. This one happens to be a really interesting find because this was cut a couple weeks ago, but look, new buttons are starting to grow off of the same stump. So I've heard of this happening, but I never really believed it. It just sounds like some kind of folklore, but it really does happen sometimes, I guess. So if you do cut it, there is a chance that this might happen. So how about that? Interesting. If we look right here on this tree, you can see these mushrooms growing right off the side of the tree. How beautiful is that? They're very hardy, very thick mushrooms. These are a species of foliota. These ones do not have any studs or gems on them. I don't know if they're edible or not, but these are always growing on a tree like this and they grow in clusters like this. If you ever see these in the woods, some of them are edible, some poisonous, some not recommended. So do your homework, but this is known as a foliota. I came across another popular edible mushroom and trust me, 
I'm not lying when I'm saying I'm finding all of these in a 30 minute walk here in the Pacific Northwest. October is known as Copernus Comatus or the Shaggy Mane. These grow in big clusters typically and uh, they turn to ink within a few days. They start turning black and they deteriorate. This is a very valuable edible. This is a good mushroom. They're often growing in like horse pastures and big clusters, disturbed land, sidewalks that are made of gravel and driveways. And uh, this one makes it into the basket tonight. So look at what I just found here. This is known as Turbinellus flaccosis or the scaly base or the scaly chanterelle. It is considered to be toxic here in the Pacific Northwest. People confuse them for the chanterelle and so some people call it a false chanterelle. This is called the scaly vase chanterelle, the woolly chanterelle, turbinellus flaccosis. And it is, it does look a little bit like a chanterelle. So be careful when you're out picking. These are known to be toxic. Cool find though. Right here we've came across a pretty cool one. Very, very stout little mushroom. Look at this little guy. Super thick, very sturdy. This is known as a Boletus fibrillosis. Some people call it the Fib King. And it's got this very kind of fuzzy cap on it. It's got a really kind of fuzzy cap and a lot of this reticulation on the stipe. And that means these little fuzz and whatnot. Um, I hear they're good eating. So I think this one makes it in our basket today and we're gonna take it home to cook. So here's an interesting mushroom, a relative of Amanita muscaria. Right here we have a Amanita pantherina. And this is a full grown Amanita pantherina, also toxic. Another indicator of this mushroom is the veil remnants that are on the cap. You can see some right here. Those used to be white spots when it was really young. So again, another toxic. So if you're out in the forest like this and you see something like this and you go, is that a death cap? It's not a death cap, but it is a toxic mushroom. So avoid this one. It's brown with white spots, Amanita pantherina. If you look down here, you can see all these little tiny mushrooms and they're so little, they're really not, not even worth considering picking to eat. I mean, they're just, they're so frail and fragile. But uh, these are uh, Mycena species, and so um, there are so many different species of these Mycena mushrooms that uh, grow around here. So if you see little tiny thin-stemmed brownish type mushrooms like this, they have a name for them, that's an LBM. That just means little brown mushroom. There's so many types of little brown mushrooms out here. So here I am just a little bit in the brush and I found this. And a lot of people see these and they think, is that a bolete? And it actually is a form of bolete. It's called a suillus. Um, this is commonly known as the slippery jack or the suillus luteus. And it's a pretty mushroom and they get really big and they get awfully contorted. This particular specimen is pretty symmetrical and they call it a slippery jack. It's got this membranous slimy layer on top. And if you look, you can see how the margin is very thin and it kind of wraps under. That's pretty indicative of a suillus mushroom. These are said to be edible. Not necessarily the most desirable. You can find a lot of them. Just growing on the side of any grocery store in the beauty bark, you usually see big clusters of these. Suillus. My name's Aaron Hilliard, and on behalf of Mushroom Wonderland on YouTube, we wish you safe trails and happy picking. Thanks for watching.